Hi everyone, it's your boy Zach here to talk to you about life and death. But first, let's talk about cell phones and Indiegogo. So I had a cell phone, a working cell phone, um, for I don't know three and a half hours, but not in a row. <laughs> so I finally got a cell phone. I got an iPhone 13 Mini, and I chose it just because I was like, I want a lame phone that I'm not just gonna want to use all the time. Also, since the last time I bought a cell phone. All the cell phones are huge now. They're like uh, the, the little handheld video games. So I got it, and they, and they just like rung it up. They did like two little things. They're like, uh, "Is my cell, is my phone number on it?" They're like, "Yo, yeah, yeah. You just you just take it out of the box and you just power it on." No, <laughs> no. It was two hours on tech support just to get it to work as a phone, and then I made one call, and then it lost like all all bars for like three or four hours then another hour on tech support and they couldn't finish it and then like an hour later it switched back on i looked it up and i guess the iphone 12s and 13s have had some major issues with uh connectivity to you know the network which is kind of a big deal since it's a phone uh so returning that one luckily i got you know a certain amount of time to return it without any penalty uh, so I'm looking for suggestions on phones that are good and probably uh, not ridiculous. I mean, these things are just getting silly. They look like novelty prop phones from like a comedy show. Uh, the other thing is that Grand Bazaar has 13, Grand Bazaar add-ons has 13 hours left. This is only for people who uh, backed the original Jawbreakers Grand Bazaar that's 19 months late that will go out as soon as it's printed um possibly by the end of uh this month i gotta get a schedule on when they're gonna print it um so i was like i got stuff in inventory why don't i just give them the chance because it's no additional shipping fee it's just you know just packaged together so um uh that is uh up for 13 more hours so if you're a backer of grand bazaar go jump on that so i did a uh, community post on this and then i was thinking about it more i was like yeah, I should probably do an actual uh, video on this. So this is Jack Kirby and Neil Adams at the 1973 San Diego Comic Con. I looked up their ages at the time, and they would have been 56 and 32. Um, and I, it's got to be very strange to uh, to look at you know something like this if you know you're not if you're in your 20s or 30s. It's just looks like very strange, but. Um, this is the year I was born and they were still dressing like this a few years later and looking like this and the hair and everything. So this just reminds me of being a kid in the seventies and this is what like dads and grandpas looked like. So every time, um, somebody in comics passes away, um, you know, there will be people who commemorate them and I've, you know, I've made my point before that I find a lot of those a little over the top you know it's like you've never talked about this person ever and suddenly they're the most important person you're like fine whatever um but people always say you know why don't you commemorate people when they pass away well not to be that maudlin but i've literally you know i've been to war well technically i've been to war zones four times so east timor when i went there was still a war zone so i got combat pay but we didn't see any combat but i did Two deployments to Iraq, one to Afghanistan, and I've seen 20-year-olds turned into marinara sauce. So whenever somebody dies in their 60s, 70s, and 80s, um, everyone else is getting very sad, and I'm just thinking like, wow, you had a really long and peaceful life. Um, so uh, it's kind of grim, and people don't really like to hear stuff like that, so I usually keep it to myself. But it it's becoming a thing, because it, it kind of feels like, more and more um, elder statesmen are, are passing away and um, they're not really being replaced. Uh, by that, I mean that you had, you know, Jack Kirby in the, geez, 30s, 30s and 40s. And he was he was really coming into his own <coughs> a generation later. You have uh, Neil Adams, <coughs> um, same thing. And then, you know, a generation later, you have, you know, the people I make videos about zeros. So it doesn't feel like they're being replaced so much as, you know, it's just the end uh, of an era. The way I look at it, 
is, uh, first of all, I'm always impressed by how fit everyone was. <laughs> like, like Neil Adams is like a little overweight, but he is probably more fit than the average American right now. Freaking Jack Kirby looks like he could go back onto active duty. He's 56. Uh, if you ever see like, you know, Coney Island, 1974, it's just, there's no fat people. There's no fat people. Fat people existed, but they didn't go to the beach. Because they were embarrassed. Um, so anyway, when I see, you know, pictures like this and when I hear about elder statesmen dying, I just think about, like, like how was their life, their, their long, you know, mostly peaceful life. With Neil Adams and Jack Kirby, they were both creating, you know, up until the points that they died. Neil Adams was still quite good. A little silly, um, but I think he always had kind of a silly personality. He was a very unique guy. Jack Kirby, unfortunately, had um, uh, debilitation in his fine motor control. So literally, like the last few years of his life, you could look and his stuff is just off. It was like warped. It's like his vision was off or his, his uh, you know, uh, hand-eye coordination was off. But they were both being uh, um, creative. So one of the things that people always get on me, they're like, you know, well, why are you making so much stuff? And I'm like... Bro, I'm 48. <laughs> I could go at any moment, especially late 40s, early 50s. A lot of guys just died and, and nobody, did. Hey, you know, he made it to 51, you know. Um, so uh, I'm sleeping last night and I get a story idea. Now, well, not a story idea, but the beginning of a story idea. The, the dream was that, you know, uh, I was in this group of people and we were all going to go fight in Ukraine. And it was like paramilitary so it was like, you know, uniforms and standard issue weapons and, you know, typical military stuff, hurry up and wait. And they have us in this, you know, giant concrete hall. And, you know, they keep calling out names. Oh, so-and-so is going, so-and-so is and And so they get like a thousand people shipped out on different flights. Finally, there's like 12 of us. And I mean, it's a dumb dream. Obviously, it wouldn't be the same. But it's me and like... The X Men. <laughs> I'm right. I was like, oh, that's Jean Grey. That's and and so the deal is like everyone got shipped off to war, except for the very small people uh, percentage of people that had superpowers. And I was like, okay, that's not a full story idea. That's a that's an interesting like first act. Um, and then in my dream, <laughs> I literally contacted Chuck Dixon as like, hey, I got this idea. You want to work on it? And uh, I, I always hear these people like, oh, I'm 45, I'm middle aged. It's like, you think you're living to 90? You're not middle aged, motherfucker. You're old. I had another friend, he, he, was, uh, he was saying, like, uh, uh, yeah, I'm going to do that when I'm old. I'm like, you're old now. You're my age. When I watch movies, I'm older than everyone except for the guy who plays the wizard. So it's like, make hay while the sun shines. Make that, you know. Uh, I'm sorry I'm pissing off people <laughs> by being creative and I'm trying to be better about being late, but God, no, I'm going to make as much stuff as possible as long as I can, as long as there's an audience. Um, and uh, so uh, I don't really get like bummed out. Like I look at these guys and I say they had long lives. They were very creative. They were very, you know, loved. Uh, they have uh, a lasting legacy. I'm watching this movie called The Man Who Would Be King, and there's two things in that movie uh, that are kind of related to the subject. One is there's a point where Sean Connery and Michael Caine, they're kind of trapped on the side of a mountain, and it looks like it's the end. Uh, so Michael Caine's like, man, I, I didn't, you know, don't worry. You know, Sean Connery's very upset. He's like, I, I, I don't want to die by inches, feeling myself slowly freeze to death. And Michael Caine says, when it gets really close, I'll do, you know, I'll do the honors. He's basically saying he's going to kill Sean Connery and then he'll kill himself. So then they start talking about their lives and it's very kind of light and funny. And they're, they're like, you know, no good deeds to speak of, you know, <laughs> and they're kind of like running themselves down. Um, and uh, they're like, we both did a lot of awful things. Uh, and then they go, you know, but uh, I wouldn't trade it all for our memories. We've lived the lives of 10 men. And then Sean Connery starts singing. This causes an avalanche, which actually reveals a path and they can escape. So um, basically, it was, it was a nice thing of two guys thinking they were at their end. And then they're just kind of, you know, just 
thinking about their lives and what went wrong and, and, and what was cool. And then they get a new path at uh, life. Then there's another thing where um, uh, they were talking about, they were filming in a village and there was this guy, they say he was 108. He was, he was old. He, I doubt he was 108. And, you know, he had always lived in this village, very remote. And so they used him as a village elder in one scene. And then they showed him the dailies. And no, they didn't, he didn't say like, you stole my soul. He was like, uh, he looked at it and he was pleased. And he says, now, and he says, uh, now I will live forever. And uh, I thought that was a good uh, way to think about artists. You know, they've created something valuable. Uh, one of the things, uh, you know, I talked about like uh, Chris Claremont and he knows his characters so well that they could literally walk into the room and he would just be like, oh, hey, where you been? And uh, I always feel like I always feel that way about people who died. Like if they knocked on a door, I wouldn't be like, oh, my gosh, a zombie, a ghost. I'd be like, hey, I thought you died. And they're like, yeah, no, I was just really sick. And they held the funeral. But then, you know, right as they were about to bury me, I was like, I got better. And I've just been in the hospital a long time. Like, I don't feel like people who died are actually dead. Like, they're very alive in my imagination and in my memory. So they could just come back at any time and I wouldn't freak out about it. Anyway, just something to think about. Thanks for watching. Bye.